Hello, everyone. I think we can get started now. I'm Will Mayfield, and I'll introduce the uh, Developmental Testbed Center's Visitor Program speaker today, Yvette Hernandez Banos. Yvette is visiting us from the Center for Weather Forecasting and Climate Studies, or CPTEC, at the National Institute for Space Research in São José dos Campos, São Paulo, Brazil, where she's pursuing her PhD in meteorology. She previously attained her master's degree from INPEI and her bachelor's degree from the Higher Institute of Technology and Applied Sciences in Cuba. Yvette joined us for a year long stay beginning around the 1st of March last year. So she got to have a great couple of weeks getting used to having an office at NCAR. Since then, it's been a privilege working with Yvette and our DTC data assimilation team with myself and Minghu and Guo Chinga. Lastly, I want to remind everyone that um, you should find a Slido box at the, at the bottom of the webcast page if you just scroll down a little bit. And there you can ask, add questions for Yvette that we will um, address at the end of the talk. So now I'll hand it over to Yvette to get started. All right. Thanks, Will, for the introduction. Um, and before I get started, I would like to extend my uh, knowledge to the DTC uh, DA team, Ming and Goshen and Will, for all their help during this time, and also my academic advisor. I would like to extend a special thanks to Derek Kleist and uh, Jacob Kerley from EMC and uh, Luis and Nancy and Eric from the DTC for all the guidance and support, uh, even before I was, uh, when I was writing the proposal. And I would like to thank the uh, FE3 LAM GSI UFS Short Range Web Application and MET developers for the effort uh, developing these systems. And uh, also I would like to uh, thank the DTC for this great opportunity. Uh, it has been really productive and I have learned a lot. So um, it is widely known that the GFS, it is not only the foundation of the NSEP uh, numerical weather prediction pred 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 systems, but also of uh, many operational centers like the CPTIC uh, in Brazil, the, uh, the GFS uh, fits our uh, global and regional models. And as NOAA is uh, transitioning uh, through a unified forecast system, the CPTIC has also started some, some work regard in this, on this regard. And NOAA and CPTIC has uh, collaboration agreements that make possible this interaction and, and the uh, exchange of knowledge and also open some opportunity for uh, our graduate students to uh, be part of this collaboration, so uh, which my pro project might be included. The UFS uh, encompasses uh, several applications, and the application for uh, convective regional and convective scales or rapid refresh forecast system is uh, built is under development and is built upon the uh, short range weather application. The short range weather application was uh, public was released the last year, and it includes the preprocessing utilities, uh, the FE3 dynamical core with uh, the coming community physics package, and the unified post-processor system. Uh, it also includes a workflow, but it doesn't include the data, the data simulation component. So in this work, we, are, we focus on adding this component and uh, uh, assess it and uh, evaluate it. Um, it is important to say that uh, as all you may know that the RFS may uh, 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 be in operations and um, replace the current suite of operational systems. So before it happens, the, uh, this RFS needs to be extensively tested and evaluated. Uh, and, and this work is uh, built upon this necessity. Currently, the RFS workflow is based on the short range web application community workflow. On the left, it is what uh, it was, uh, is included in the public release without the data simulation component. And on the right, you can see where we added the, uh, the uh, analysis system. We here added the GSI, uh, which is the system that the analysis system that uh, is uh, being used at the uh, NSEP. Uh, and with this, we have a, a, a suitable framework to assess the capability, to investigate the capability of the RFS to represent convection. And to do that, we uh, assess different CCPP uh, physics suites, and different data simulation algorithm and configuration. We also evaluated uh, the impact of different data sets 
and examined different cold star initial condition and cycling configuration. And uh, we evaluated the RFS system for conversion, uh, initiation, and evolution. The case on, under study uh, occurred on May 4, 2020. It, uh, it is a squad line that developed ahead of a, a software mo moving cold front. Uh, this day was uh, pretty insta 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 unstable in, in this area, and uh, the first cells were uh, observed uh, around 20Z over northeast of Oklahoma. And the system evolved across the state, but it didn't move too fast. Uh, we can see that um, uh, there is uh, this more stratiform convection ahead of this uh, the, of the main course, and this uh, squall line. Um, had associated uh, several uh, hail and wind reports uh, on this day. So here we have the uh, multi-radar multi-sensor composite reflectivity uh, for May 4th at 2021Z 20, and at May 5th at 1Z. And these are very important because um, these uh, are the hours that will be uh, used for the ver verification of the uh, of the uh, forecast. So at 21C, we can see that this is close to the hour that the convection initiated. And at May, May 5th, uh, 1C, we can see that the squad line has already uh, evolved and uh, was losing somehow its uh, strength, but we can see still some very strong uh, cells uh, over Oklahoma and part of Missouri. So in this study, we performed, we conducted a numerical, several numerical experiments, and um, we uh, run our, our experiments through uh, May 4th, 00, zero uh, to May 5th, 06. And we use hourly her initial conditions and lateral boundary conditions. We use 64 uh, vertical levels and three, uh, a domain covering um, the area on the, on the right with three kilometers of horizontal resolution. This is a, a radar centric domain uh, on Fort uh, Smith in Arkansas. So uh, this ex the experiments that we conducted are uh, kind of divided in two groups related uh, the first one to the C CCPP suite and the data simulation. And we can see the, 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 com the combination of using a different CCPP suite with different uh, configurations in the uh, data simulation system. So here uh, are the uh, CCPP suite that were tested. We, uh, we started uh, testing the system before the short range web application was released. So here we have uh, the, the GS, what we call the GSD star and GFS reg uh, that were uh, before the public release. And after that, we uh, tested the RFS version one and GFS version 16, 15. It is important to mention that the RFS uh, version one, it, it is uh, based on the her, uh, parameterizations and uh, uh, GF, the GFS uh, suites were, they are, they are uh, based on the GFS parameterizations and the GSD star is based on the RAP uh, parameterizations. Uh, for the forecast verification, we use the model evaluation tools and we uh, use the uh, tools listed on the, on the left. And these figures show what we had, we, um, we did uh, for the uh, verification part. We found when we started to run the system, we found that some, at some hours we had some observations with very large, large errors, that they were uh, obvious, obvious outliers in our data set. So in order to uh, identify those, those observations that were very discordant from the rest, we applied a, a, a quality control similar to that the, that is applied into the in, in the GSI gross check. So we were able to identify those stations and limited them from the uh, verification part. Um, so here, uh, come, uh, going a little bit more in the into the experiments, uh, this is the uh, um, configuration that we uh, uh, have for the experiments using uh, her initial conditions. So this, this experiment is that what we would call like a her DA with best initial conditions that it is what we have now. So it is using her initial conditions at each initial time. We can see uh, on the bottom, this is the, the, the period that was that the experiments were run. So at each time we are uh, uh, adding, using the, the 
per initial conditions and 18 hour forecasts are uh, executed at each hour. Here we show the results using the RFS version one and in the, on the upper, upper panels uh, using her initial conditions. And on the, uh, in the bottom panels are the results using GFS version 15. We can see uh, clear features from the, these two um, CCPP suite. We can see that the RFS uh, phys uh, physics, they show uh, stronger cells and a smaller, a smaller coverage. If we can, if we uh, uh, remember the bold figure that I showed before, we can see that there are individual cells and very strong cells that were not observed. And in the results from the GFS version 15, we can see that the, the cells are not that strong. They are weaker, but they are like smoother and they uh, uh, cover larger areas with more uh, spurious, specific, spurious convection. We also tested, um, uh, well, what we call a, a baseline uh, a experiment, where we uh, um, we use call start at zero Z and twelve and twelve C using uh, her initial conditions. But in the hours in between, we use warm start. This is uh, without data simulation, but um, what we use as uh, initial condition for the next cycle, it is the one hour forecast from the uh, previous cycle. So this, this, this was configured to uh, test the, the cycling uh, workflow to make sure that everything was uh, working. And we, uh, the, the next experiment we uh, are, are built using this uh, configuration. Our results from this experiment uh, using uh, the different CCPP suites that we tested, we can see on the, on the, the four panels on the left are the results for the two hour forecast and six hour forecast using RFS and GFS version 15. On the right, we can see the results from GSDSR and GFS reg also for two and six hour forecast. We can see here that um, even though we don't have data simulation in, in, most of the, uh, uh, in, in most of the cycles, we can see that still the model is able to capture the main features of the convection that was occurring Although we can see uh, that, for example, we can we can still see the strong cells from the uh, RFS experiment and also the large coverage of the convection uh, in from the experiment using uh, from the experiment using GFS version 15. Using the GSDSR, we can see that uh, with this uh, suite, we are now able to capture the uh, convection related associated to the squall line. And with the uh, GFS uh, reg, we can see that there is a more uh, a, a overestimation of uh, the convection over Texas at two and also at six hour forecast and uh, between uh, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas. Here we show some uh, statistics of how it looks uh, at, two, at 12C uh, during the day and during the night, how it looks the temperature. So we can see. Uh, that the GFS and GSDSR has uh, clear uh, mm, cool, their cool, cool bias during the day, may, uh, almost an, on the entire atmos atmosphere. And we can see that the, uh, the experiment using R, uh, RFS and GFS version 16, it sh they show a warmer bias during the day and also during the night, but during the night, uh, during the day, we can see that uh, in the in the lower close to the surface, we can see about a, a cold bias, uh, and we can also see that on the in the on the, in the figure on the right for the two meters temperature. This is against meter and synaptic reports. We can see that uh, the experiment using um, the pink line using RFS uh, is uh, has colder bias in the first uh, in the first cycles and also in the last cycle. So this seems to be related to the uh, diurnal cycle uh, or, or also to the uh, convection that was actually occurring during, during the afternoon. So uh, when we added the data simulation, we can see that uh, we configured this experiment using the GSI at each in its, in, in its initial time. Uh, so we added the observations at each initial time and we use the background uh, 
at zero and 12, we use the her initial condition. And in the hours in between, we use the first hour forecast from the previous cycle. Here we can see uh, that the, uh, what I call the CTL observations, it is like control observations, including upper surface radial wind and precipitable water and uh, satellite wind. These, are, these observations are from uh, RAP observations. So uh, the first configuration that I want to show here, it is uh, using the three divar three algorithm and uh, showing results uh, from the using uh, the analysis grid three kilometers. We also tested using using nine kilometers, what we call G three and G three and G one. However, between these both experiment, we saw uh, a very similar analysis increments. So for we will only show uh, G one results. This is how it looks the analysis increment for the experiment, this experiment using RFS and 3 divar uh, with grid analysis grid ratio uh, three kilometers. So we can see that uh, the uh, upper panels are the increments for a specific humidity and temperature. We can see that uh, uh, the, the background seems to be uh, drier and warmer. And we can see that the analysis is uh, uh, trying to fit more the observations. Uh, and we, uh, on, in the bottom, in the bottom panels, we can see results from the ominous A and ominous ominous B, ominous A the red line and ominous B the, the black line. So this experiment shows that the uh, uh, DA system is working well. We can see that uh, the analysis is fitting better the the observations. This is for uh, uh, meter meter observations. And the reflectivity fields, we can see on the on the lop, uh, upper panels results from the experiment using ODA, what we call ODA, and on in the lower panels results uh, from the experiment using RFS and 3D bar. So we clearly can see the um, that the, the DA uh, has the ability to improve the con the convection forecast. However, we can see uh, uh, for two hour forecast the figure. Uh, lower panel on the left, we can see that the blue uh, circle, it shows that uh, this hour, this, uh, mm, we have an overproduction of the convection in this area, but we also see on the, uh, in, in the top, the, the red uh, circle, that we, has, uh, we have better uh, representation of this convection in here, at least less convection that is shown in the experiment without data simulation. Also, at six hours forecast, we can see a better match to the observation, although we, we, can, we can see, we can observe some spurious observations um, in, in many parts of the domain. Um, that was using RFS. These results are using uh, GFS version 15. We can see that uh, even though the data simulation is uh, trying to fit better the observations using this uh, physics suite, we have uh, um, still an overproduction of the convection, although we can see here on the left, on the right, at six hour forecast that using the data simulation, we are able to differentiate the both system that were occurring at this hour, that we can see that in the experiments using ODA. So in, in a general view, we, we can see the, the weaker cells and a larger coverage. So these are results uh, using uh, GSDSR and GFS uh, REC physics suite. Uh, on the top panels, we can see that at, uh, we can see very strong cells from using uh, GSDSR. And on the right, we can see that the convection associated to the squad line was must not covered. And uh, the results from the GFS REC, we can see that there is a very overproduction of convection it seems like it has an early convection initiation uh, over Texas at both, at both uh, hours and also uh, in West uh, Oklahoma. So here, what we want to uh, point out is that this uh, a, a could be related to the CPCPP by, by themselves, but also a bug that was found in the system in generating the PBL seed observations for FE3 lamp. This was uh, fixed recently, so we in the first, in the next uh, results we don't we won't show uh, more more results using these two physics uh, physics suites. 
So this um, other other this other configuration was uh, using a hybrid and uh, hybrid an analysis. We tested the hybrid with different ensemble background error uh, weight, uh, fifty percent, twenty five percent pure ensemble, and also ninety percent for for our results. We will only show uh, one hundred percent ninety. 25 and zero, which it is three divide. And on the right, it is uh, the strategy that we follow to use the uh, JIRAS uh, ensemble forecast. Uh, since they are six, uh, only six, so the day we uh, use the same file for the six, six consecutive hours. So here we have the analysis increment using 100% uh, of the ensemble B on the, on the left. And on the right, it is using three divide. So we can see here uh, a, a more detailed uh, um, analysis using uh, the ensemble. And we can also, the lower panels are the analysis, uh, the fit to the observation, O minus F and O minus B for the experiment using 100%. Uh, so we can see a better fit to the observations and that the data simulation system was uh, doing a good job. And here are the results for the uh, reflectivity, uh, composite reflectivity. On the, on the uh, upper panels, we see results using 100% of the ensemble B. And uh, lower panels are three divide results that we showed before. So here, uh, what uh, we can see that at 12 forecast, we see uh, the, that the red cir circle uh, on, the, on the lower panel at two hours was the convection in this area was improved. We can see a better fit. We can see that uh, there is a, a better match uh, to the observations. And we also can see that this uh, is uh, the, the advantage of using uh, ensemble forecasts. So um, this is using 90% of the ensemble B. We can see that as we uh, start introducing the uh, part of the static B, we start to start to see again uh, some of the convection that was uh, um, oh, located at the, between at the west of uh, Missouri, southwest of Missouri. Uh, but we can see that there is a cleaner um, uh, representation of the convection at six hour forecast. We can see that there is a better representation of, the, of both system uh, uh, the square line that was occurring between Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas, and the other one on the right. So this um, uh, also re the results using 25% um, the, of the ensemble B and, and showing these uh, results, but for different CCPP suite on the, on the left, we can see results using RFS version one and on the right using uh, uh, GFS version 15. We can see that they uh, try to match the observations, uh, each one with their own particularities, but uh, we can see the same pattern that our, the model has, uh, a, it is a slightly drier and, and, and warmer at least at this hour. And here uh, we, can, we can see that uh, for 25%, uh, we, uh, we can still see uh, that convection there that was over overestimated, but we can see uh, that uh, still we we have the uh, convection initiation over Oklahoma. We we are not able to see that clearly in the experiment using uh, GFS version sixteen at two hour forecast and uh, six hour forecast. We have a better representation of uh, the convection uh, over this area, although we know that uh, this differs. From the observation since it has very uh, strong cells and um, larger coverage. Also we tested uh, mm, an option that it is uh, into the system to uh, remove super saturation uh, that is coming from the uh, uh, background. So this is uh, basically to limit that uh, the humidity. And this is the difference between the uh, analysis uh, without this uh, parameter and the analysis with the parameter. So we expect that uh, with, with the, this parameter, we have less convection. So where we see red colors, it is that we had more, more convection without this parameter. And we can see 
that this is for 54, 50 and 63 levels. 63, 63 is close to the surface. And we can see that there is a remotion, it is a removal of uh, the humidity across the, uh, these levels, uh, mainly uh, in the area where uh, convection was occurring. This, this is valid at 21, 21 Z. However, when we look at the, at the forecast, at the reflectivity forecast, we can see that uh, we have, uh, instead of have a removal of the, of the uh, uh, overproduction of the, of the convection, we, we, we find that there are some overproduction of the convection in some areas, like here in, in, in Missouri and also uh, over Arkansas. We also tested uh, the, the code with the, uh, the bug that was fixed. So it is uh, uh, using pseudo observations, temperature and humidity to locate uh, better the, the PDL. So we uh, tested this, this code. And here we have the results for the analysis increment. On the, right, on the left, it is with uh, using this pseudo observation and on the, on the right, uh, without the use of the pseudo observations. So we can see still the main features, although a little bit smoother. Um, and when we look at the, at, the, at the fields, we can see that using the pseudo observations uh, um, lead us to uh, an overproduction and, uh, of the convection. We, uh, are, um, we think that this uh, still need more tuning because here uh, this doesn't help too much to the uh, uh, forecast, the convection forecast. Here are some results. Uh, from the statistics for temperature on the on the left, humidity in the middle panels and the wind on the right panels. So we can see here that basically the uh, the RMAs and bias are larger in this at this hour. This is for two hour forecast through the entire atmosphere atmosphere mostly. We also uh, conducted uh, observation impact experiments uh, changing the, uh, the type of observation that were assimilated. Uh, in this table, uh, we show the uh, different uh, observations, the different experiment, experiments. And for uh, to, uh, today, we'll only show results using upper observations and upper with surface and also CTL observation and CTL, CTL's observation plus the bending angle. Just remember that the CTL observation includes upper surface radial wind, sat wind and PW. And this, um, the, GNA, the uh, radio occultation bending angle were from the GDAS observations. And since those are only available at synaptic hours, we use uh, the same strategy of using the same, the same file for the six hour uh, consecutive, but taking into account the, uh, the window of the uh, uh, assimilation time. And here, this is uh, the results of, of uh, using upper, only upper air uh, on the top of upper panels and using upper plus surface in the lower panels. So here we can clearly see the impact of assimilating the uh, surface observations for the convection forecast. We can see clearly here the convection initiation uh, um, on, over northeast of Oklahoma that we are not able to capture using only upper observations. We also have some ex spurious convection, but we, we also have some signal of this in the experiment using only upper observations. And uh, the, the, the results for a six hour forecast also show uh, that using a uh, surface, we have an overproduction of the convection uh, in Texas. At this hour, we had the influence of uh, part of the of a dry line. It was, it was very small cells that were produced at this area, but uh, the model is uh, overestimating that convection in that area. And these are results using uh, the uh, bending angle. So we, uh, on, the, on the left, we show the RMS and bias uh, of the differences, the ominous, ominous F and ominous D. We can see that the discontinuous lines, it means that those were hours where we didn't have any, uh, any data. But at the hours that we had data, we can clearly see 
that uh, the analysis matches very the observations. We can see a, a reduction in these differences. And on the right, I show the, uh, uh, the observations uh, at 21Z and May, May 5th, uh, 1Z. So even at, in this small domain, we were able to have a couple of these, of these profiles. And results uh, using CTL observations and CTL observations plus bending angle, we can see that using the bending angle, angle we somehow uh, we have uh, an over uh, overproduction in some cells. We have stronger in stronger cells here over a two-hour forecast over um, North Arkansas. But we also have a better representation of uh, of the convection uh, over Missouri. These are some uh, statistics for, for the vertical profile for temperature, humidity, and wind. We here see that results are very mixed. We don't see, um, this is for two hour forecast and we can, we can see this also for a six hour forecast, but uh, we can see uh, the, 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 uh, the influence and the, the, the impact of using, for example, upper observations in the lower panels, in the lower levels, uh, and also using all the, 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 all the entire data set in the uh, upper, upper levels. We also tested uh, different vertical levels than those that are provided uh, in the system. These uh, hybrid coefficients were uh, courtesy of Xinhua from GSL. So um, the vertical levels that are distributed now in the system are this uh, orange line. When we look at where are located the bottom and top mode of levels. They are similar to the uh, global model. So we call the uh, mm, the black line like like regional levels because they match better what we we see in uh, regional models. So here are some results of the statistics from this experiment. Uh, we 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 can see that even though we don't have we, we can see any impact at night during the night. We can still see some impact during the day, mainly uh, in, the lower, in, the lower, in the lower levels. And we uh, also tested uh, different initial conditions and uh, cycling configuration. This is using GFS initial conditions. And this is uh, mm, trying to, to follow what is used in RAP, this, uh, Currently, so here we see that we use call start in, 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 this, in the second row, we use call start at zero, at zero Z, and also we run at zero Z a spin up cycle, uh, which is parallel to this uh, continuous cycling. And at, and at six Z and 18 Z, we uh, uh, use the first hour forecast from the previous cycle uh, in the, the, the spin up cycle at this hour. And in this experiment, we use not uh, a, we use uh, the atmosphere and surface from this first hour forecast. We also run an experiment uh, using the surface uh, from the continuous cycle. So this second row will be, will be continuous, uh, fully cycled, uh, and the one before we have the the influence of the surface that will be coming from the uh, one hour uh, forecast from a spin up cycle. And here are some results on uh, upper panels. We have results using 25% and CTL observations. And uh, the lower panels, uh, it is using GS, GFS initial conditions and, uh, and the experiment using uh, surface from the partial cycle. So uh, the, 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 the cycle that it is full cycle. And we can see uh, in, a good improvement in the short term forecast, we can see uh, a better representation of the uh, convection over northeast of Oklahoma and also uh, southwest of Miss, uh, Missouri. But we also see that there is some uh, overestimation of convection in between Kansas and Missouri. And uh, we can also see uh, over overproduction of convection at six hour forecast uh, over Missouri and over Texas. If we look at the experiment using the uh, surface and atmosphere at six and, and 18 in the lower panels, 
we, we can see uh, th that there is an improvement at two hour forecast in the experiment. Um, we can see that there is a reduction of the in in intensity of this convection. And we can also see that at six hour forecast. And these are uh, results from uh, a, the verification of the vertical profiles. We can see that the difference between those, th these experiments is, is almost neutral, but uh, we can see that uh, mainly in the, lower, in the lower levels, we have uh, some uh, improvement when using GFS initial conditions over uh, her initial conditions. Although we can see that using her initial condition, it slightly much bears the observations. And using the, uh, verifying the uh, two meters temperature and two meters dew point, we can see that uh, the, the impact is almost neutral and we can see how it compares with using her initial conditions. So in the first 12, 12 hours, we can see that using her initial condition is, uh, has uh, lower RMS E and, uh, and biases. Uh, and it seems to follow the uh, diurnal cycle or it, it, should, it could be uh, related to the convection that was occurring at this hour. And here is uh, some results for the uh, precipitation um, verification. This is for uh, forecast lead time two hours and six hours uh, on the right. And these are for uh, not all the uh, experiments, but some of them uh, for those that we consider that had uh, most important results. So we, the main thing that we can see is that higher, um, higher uh, threshold one inch in one hour has very low, low uh, skill. While we can see that uh, lower uh, threshold has better skills in most of the experiments. And in summary, we, uh, we, we tested the system and with uh, using her initial condition, it, the system showed the ability, it showed the ability of the system to represent convection. Also when testing different CCPP suites, we, we, we see that we have a, a different representation of the convection uh, when using RFS version one, we can see more strong and individual cells. While, and when using GFS version 15, we can see weaker and smoother cells with larger coverage. Uh, from the results using data simulation, we saw that it improved the convection forecast. It matched better the observations. It, it was mainly when using hybrid analysis and when we use a more complete observation data set. Uh, we also saw that uh, using the PBL seed observations, uh, it, it uh, overestimates the convection uh, at least at the hour that we were verifying. So uh, more tuning is needed for this for this part of the code. Uh, we also uh, found that for uh, cold stars running with uh, GFS initial condition, the partial cycle cycling of the atmosphere and the continuous cycle uh, cycling the surface it improved the short term convection. And we also saw that the heavy precipitation is more difficult to predict uh, in the last figures. And finally, uh, we, we saw that the current RFS development has a great potential for convective scales and uh, that more testing is uh, an evaluation of all the other options are needed. And for future work, we intend to investigate the ability of the system to represent convection uh, on tropical regions, as for example, uh, over uh, Amazon, where we have uh, the occurrence of uh, the Amazon coastal squad lines that forms in Northern Brazil and they uh, uh, move through the central Amazon. So we will be uh, working on this in the next six months. And that's all, that's all I have today. I will be happy to take any questions. Yeah, thank you, Yvette. I think, okay, yeah, there's the Sligo. Um, it looks like Evan asks, is it typical to use a 25% contribution to of the ensemble background error to the total BE? And the systems I worked with, it's been around 80%. So 25% seems like a small amount of info to use for the ensemble. 
Well, uh, currently the system, uh, if I am not wrong, the current uh, operational suites, they, they, they use 25% of the uh, ensemble B. And we tested uh, 25, we tested 50%, and we also tested 90%. And uh, we, we, we saw that with 25%, we have uh, um, good results. So that's, what, that's why we, uh, most of, you know, we, we started running 3D bar, then we, we run the pure ensemble, and we then and change, the, change the different uh, weights. And then we decided to uh, go to other experiments using 25% because we saw that uh, overall and through all the statistics, this uh, with this uh, percentage, the results were 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 better. Great. Any other questions? Okay, um, not seeing any other questions. So I guess we can wrap up unless any others come in. But if anybody does have any questions in the future, feel free to send them to us. And I'd be interested to hear any feedback or questions people have. Yes, please reach out, send an email. I would be happy to uh, help or explain or share my results. Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, great presentation. Thanks.